By April 1942, Japan had achieved its core strategic objectives. Not wanting to let up the pressure and lose their momentum, Imperial Japan considered three potential courses of action. They could move east and strike at the Hawaiian-based U.S. main fleet, move south and strike Australia, or strike west toward the Indian Ocean. The Japanese leadership decided to proceed with the third option. The Indian Ocean raid had begun. The Imperial Navy sent two forces to strike the British in the Indian Ocean. The first force was Admiral Nagumo's first air fleet, the Kido Butai. They would target British naval forces at Ceylon, now Sri Lanka. The second force to attack would be the Second Expeditionary Fleet, led by Vice Admiral Ozawa. His force would attack Allied shipping and strike land targets in India, in tandem with long-range bombers. When Nagumo sailed into the Indian Ocean on the 26th of March, he controlled the most powerful single assemblage of naval force in the world. At his command were five fleet carriers, the Akagi, Soryu, Hiryu, Shokaku, and Zuikaku, carrying 275 aircraft. He also had four fast battleships, the Hiei, Kirishima, Kongo, and Haruna, two heavy cruisers, one light cruiser, and ten destroyers. Ozawa's force was also formidable. It was made up of the light carrier Ryujo, four heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, four destroyers, and three oilers. British codebreakers managed to determine that the Japanese were targeting Colombo. As a result, British forces bolstered their defenses in Ceylon and India. The British Eastern Fleet was commanded by Vice Admiral Somerville and was quite a mixed bag. Force A of the Eastern Fleet contained the new fleet carriers Indomitable and Formidable, the battleship Warspite, two six-inch gun cruisers, and six destroyers. The two carriers together carried only 94 aircraft. The fighter aircraft included F-4F Wildcats, Sea Hurricanes, and Fulmars, while the attack aircraft consisted of the extremely vulnerable Swordfish and Albacore. One strong point for the British was that they had a reliable air-dropped torpedo and radar fitted to the Albacores, which could be used to strike Nagumo's force in a night attack. The hard part would be getting his ships into a good position. Force B of the Eastern Fleet was his slow division. This included the old and small carrier Hermes, four Royal Sovereign-class battleships, three cruisers, and eight destroyers. Somerville had received faulty reports that stated the Japanese only had two carriers, which caused Somerville to act bolder than he should have. He positioned his Force A to the south of Ceylon, but had to withdraw on April 2nd to refuel. Had he held his position, he would have been trapped between the Japanese carriers and Colombo, which would have likely been disastrous for his forces. On April 4th, a British flying boat spotted Nagumo's fleet and was able to transmit a message, but was shot down before it could reveal the size of the enemy force. Somerville was about to learn that the enemy force was not just two carriers. On April 5th, Nagumo launched his attack and 127 Japanese carrier aircraft filled the skies over Colombo. The Japanese A6M-20s thrashed the defending aircraft. The attackers sank the destroyer Tenedos along with an armed merchant cruiser and pounded the dock facilities. The Japanese also managed to destroy 33 British aircraft in the attack. Japanese losses were light at 1-0 and 6 D-3A dive bombers. While the attack on Colombo was taking place, a Japanese search plane spotted the British heavy cruisers Dorsetshire and Cornwall, which were attempting to meet up with Force A. Nagumo dispatched 53 D-3A dive bombers to deal with them. At 1638, the Japanese massacred the heavy cruisers in what was one of the best displays of dive bombing in the entire war. Dorsetshire took 10 bomb hits and sank in just seven minutes. Cornwall suffered nine direct hits and six near misses, causing it to sink in approximately 12 minutes. Had the Japanese detected Britain's Force A, the massacre could have been even worse. At the same time, Somerville was also in a good position to unleash an attack on Nagumo's carriers. Both sides were oblivious to this, and the Japanese carriers pivoted to strike their next target, Trincomalee. On April 9th, 132 Japanese planes attacked the British base at Trincomalee. The air assault blasted ship and air facilities, 
along with sinking one merchant ship and damaging the monitor Erebus. After Japanese float planes spotted a group of British ships attempting to flee, Nagumo launched a second strike consisting of 85 D-3A dive bombers and 9 A-6M 2-0s. The carrier Hermes, along with its escort, the destroyer Vampire, was sunk in 15 minutes. The captains of both vessels died, as did 313 other crew members. The dive bombers also sank the corvette Hollyhock, two fleet oilers, and a merchant ship. British Fulmars sent to save the Hermes arrived too late, but managed to shoot down four dive bombers while losing two aircraft themselves. On the same day, nine British Blenheim bombers attacked Nagumo's force, marking the first time the Kido Butai came under direct attack. The bombers targeted the carrier Akagi and battleship Congo, but missed. Zeros moved to strike the Blenheim bombers, shooting down five of them while suffering two losses themselves. While Nagumo's Kido Butai made its strikes, Ozawa's force also wreaked havoc. On April 6th, his force sank 19 vessels, totaling approximately 88,165 tons. This was the single greatest day loss in shipping the Allies suffered of the entire war. Throughout the operation, Japanese submarines sank another 32,000 tons. The light carrier Ryujo, in conjunction with land-based bombers from Burma, launched airstrikes on several cities in eastern India. The damage caused was light but led to widespread fear of invasion. Churchill called this event the most dangerous moment of the war as it threatened British sea lanes, endangered Britain's ability to obtain oil from Iran, and could have blocked further shipping of goods to the Soviet Union via the Persian Gulf. While British losses during the Indian Ocean raid were very heavy, Japan failed to take full advantage of their position, and the Royal Navy lived to fight another day.